active they can be on the map and what kind of a, a style they actually want to play here. You know, traditionally, you see TF paired with hard carry top laners, a lot mm -hmm. of split pushy top laners. Camille is a really common pairing that people would love to go towards. That's less the impact style. So I wonder if it's going to be more about, you know, either supporting bot lane or right. just getting a really aggressive carry jungler for Inspired and trying to get him off to the races because he is definitely that farm heavy yep. style who wants to get ahead and run over games. He did it all last year in the LEC. He's doing it here in the LCS. Yeah, and I'm curious. Top lane is really fighter focused for these two players. Uh, Tony Top across both LCS and his four Academy games because this Golden Guardian squad is doing double duty. It's all fighters. It's all, you know, Gwen, Camille, Renekton, that whole type the whole way through. And even Impact actually on an aggressive look as well with Gwen, Renekton, and Graves. Yes, you played Renekton before, but like, you know, there's still the Graves and the Gwen in there where like, you know, they are about getting a lot of farm and actually being big and being a primary threat come late game. So we may see EG play that side a little bit more than maybe they have so far this year. Obviously, Danny and Vulcan are great. Vulcan getting around the map a ton. So I want to see what comes out next. Of course, Jinx, a highly prized backline champion as the Ooh. setup hover comes in. And I like this. Now, again, need to repeat, we are still on 12.1. Next weekend, we will play 12.2, which is huge buffs to Senna, huge buffs to Tom Kench support. Uh, that's a very good lane, by the way, is Senna TK. It's very, very strong. Uh, so one thing I would recommend, but I'm curious which way they go with this one. And Danny, Danny actually did already play this once. He brought it out against Dignitas. We're gonna get an Olaf here. So I do think this actually really fits. And and with you know more of the supportive style bot laner coming out, I mean, presuming this is for Danny because he played last time. Theoretically, it could be sent as support for Vulcan. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna assume that it is Danny playing this. You have TF as well. So it feels like you're playing more for Inspired, right? You know, maximize the farm here on Inspired. Olaf has gotten bans in the LCS, but has not yet gotten picked. It's been getting banned against Contracts, it's been getting banned against Blabber, because that's kind of one of his signature champions. Yeah. Has some plays around the world, 13 plays, a little bit below 50% win rate, um, but I do think it really fits Inspired's play style. It's something that he has played a lot in the past, and with Senna ult coming cross map, with TF ult to really you know support you as well, if you can get in the face and get ahead of Iconic, it could be a tough time for the Zin. Yep, all about snowballing the early game. Olaf, maybe the single best face check in, you know, pre-level seven League of Legends for junglers. If he's there, he's probably winning. And of course, Senna can cross map, TF can cross map. They can either join yep. directly or indirectly and give him a lot of support. So EG could run over this game through jungle. And I always really like, I mean, generally cross mapping ults with Senna, it, you can get the shield very consistently. You can't always hit the damage, Tough. but it's super easy when you have TF because you point and click gold card, you communicate that you're going in, the ulti comes over top, you get a couple hundred extra extra bonus damage, which is pretty significant, you know, on top of that shielding for pulling off dives, for pulling off kills, uh, is one of those things that I'm going to be tracking as far as EG's communication and coordination. For sure. So we're going to see the bands come through. Gwen dropped off the table. Nautilus as an engaged support, of course, knowing the read here. Golden Guardians knows the general way that EG plays this is Danny is taking the CS. Vulcan's playing a Relic Shield support. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're not looking at set. We're not looking at, you know, farm Tom Kench or something down there. So not the looks at this point in time. Of course, Tom Kench, again, not great support in 12.1. But we go to the second pick phase now where EG needs support. EG needs a top laner. Uh, we know Graves is up. We also know that they'd be forced to blind pick top lane if Golden Guardians wait and grab a support right now. Yeah, I would expect them to grab a support. We are going to see something new from Chime. Everything he has played thus far is already banned out. A lot of support bans, four from EG. Uh, there is the Nautilus as well. So it will be the Leona coming through here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, going to give them a bit of engage because they are lacking in that department right now. And mm -hmm. I think you know that's why we saw the Rakan getting banned out you know, after the Nautilus was taken off here. And see what the next pick is going to be. I don't expect that that is going to get locked in, but it's hovering on zero, so. Yeah, the, the timer didn't reset since the oh, lock-in okay, okay. um, on 6A's side, so it was kind of down from 30. Gragas going to be the lock here. Now, that is still okay. a top support flex right now. That said, they got to pick both anyway, so yep. uh, it's not doing any heavy lifting here in the draft. Graves would make sense as one thing Impact's already played. It's a pretty solid blind overall. I think its matchups into fighters tend to be pretty solid. And so if that's locked in, we're looking at Gragas' support here with the Senna. And I wouldn't mind Gragas getting the farm, to be honest. Okay, we're going for Kennen instead. It does set some more magic damage to the roster. It's even more go forward engaged, just starting fights going off, you know, as fast yeah. as possible. Um, and so, yeah, my last question is just, is Vulcan farming or not? Because it can go either way. My, my assumption is that Danny is going to be farming. You know, Vulcan has played support kind of AP Gragas, you know, almost like that bursty style uh, a fair bit here in the LCS over the years. So I'm expecting it is going to be that. Ooh. Vladimir coming through very atypical. Vladimir actually feel is pretty strong these days, but not a super common pick for top lane. It's mostly played mid, you know, very heavily skewed towards that. 
Uh, as far as the matchup against Kennen, you know, the early levels I think are going to be difficult, but you get a couple levels under your belt, you start to get that Q cooldown down. It becomes very, very difficult for Kennen to actually have any sort of pressure in the 1v1. Yeah. Uh, will be interesting to see what summoners Tony Top is going to bring as well. You know, Ghost, Ghost Flash is so popular, and I, I do favor that a lot. It gives so much value in the team fights. And it's something that can kind of dive, you know, past someone like Inspired into that backline and really threaten some of these champions like Senna, like TF, has very strong scaling. And across the board, really, on the side of Golden Guardians, their scaling is insane. You have need to because you are really trying to keep this game even early. All right, here we go. On to the Rift, the 10th year of the LCS, the second lock-in tournament, and Evil Geniuses. Surprise, Vulcan was on the market, grabbing to the roster and undefeated. Right now, the run for EG, hoping to make it to the World Championship at the end of the year. Right now, they'll start with dominating North America. And we just see the mid laners just hanging out, spamming emotes back and forth. Always good to see here, but uh, will there be any kind of a fun ward situation? Uh, Iconic doing a pretty standard play of drop your trinket ward down in front of, mm -hmm. say, your red buff, recall for a sweeper, and then all right. We know if you invaded my red with Tony Top where he's standing, there is, I think, literally no way to get deep wards into the red jungle. So um, outside of a ward over the wall for Raptors, which Ryoma's covering, there is no deep vision. There is no guarantee yet where Iconic's starting. But now Impact spotted as he moves forward. Says, okay, I see Tony Top. Tony Top sees him back. A bit more information known and inspired. It's just maybe going to late invade the red buff. Yeah, it looks like he, he's at least considering it. And um, you can see the movement up here from Ryoma. Gets a little bit of a trade, and this is going to be one of those situations where minions have spawned, so you are just going to stay ahead off this, especially if a second Q comes up here for Ryoma. Going to be feeling pretty good about that trade. Yeah. TFL starting E is actually really high DPS. It's a ton of level 1 attack speed, and the, the auto attack damage is quite high. So Jijipion traded it reasonably close. Uh, we'll see how the lane oh, uh, turns out in the end. But yeah, that late invade, the 2v1, I mean, level 1 Vladimir basically isn't a champion. Yeah. I would take a cannon minion over level 1 Vladimir. <laughs> uh, and Iconic uh, just has to just walk away and start his blue at 150. That's Hashtag rough. leave people on that tweet. Yeah. <laughs> just check to their plane. It's going to be a good day, says EG. Uh, yeah, this is rough. I mean, not only did, did did he have to start so late, but he loses his flash, right? So that's actually brutal. They did see them moving in, though. Tony Top did spot them, so yeah. uh, not playing with respect to the fact that the invade could have been happening. You know, JoJo even moving up there to ward. I feel like the hand was kind of tipped. I'm surprised Iconic didn't just move cross map to start because now he's down a flash. He's down on camps. If you run into Inspired, you're just dead. He'll ghost on you and kill you. Yep. So it, it could mean that they give up double scuttle here as well. Uh, it's also really interesting to note that Tony Top is actually playing uh, Unsealed Spellbook, very uncommon on Vladimir. And I think his, his option was, you know, either go Ghost Flash and, and, and do it that way, or he's kind of playing with the Unsealed Spellbook. He's playing with his TP as his default. He can swap to things like the Ghost and the Ignite and the Exhaust right. for the team fights. And uh, just thinking it's not that much about the laning phase. You're not going for something along the lines of, you know, a Predator or an Electrocute, kind of more common runes. Good early trades out of Ryoma there, actually forcing what could have been the first recall out of Jojo Pen and indeed will do so. So just a Dark Seal for his first buy, and then going to go ahead and TP back into lane, full health, full mana. Okay, fine, but obviously it's going to be a bit of a lane lead early on. We'll see if Ryoma gets to get much more. And Inspired, of course, going to finish his triple buff right now up about two camps. Going to be about up a third now. Uh, bottom Scuttle is up, but Iconic's pathing took him back to the top side for his Krugs. Scuttle's just now spawned, and I think he's going to maybe even own both right here on Inspired's side. Yeah, we'll see if, if Chime is actually going to try to take this with his bot lane. Doesn't look like it just yet. It feels as, as though Iconic is just going to base and then head back towards bot to try to secure that scuttle for himself. Inspired will claim the top one. But I think if Inspired just goes straight from top scuttle to bot, he can probably get both because it does look like Ichi's bot lane is starting to push. He's not willing to risk that. Maybe he doesn't even realize that it hasn't already been taken. Uh, because they haven't had eyes on Iconic for a while. So either way, he'll get his reset. A couple of Ruby Crystals coming in to start things off and uh, going to be pretty happy with his start. He's already very far ahead of Iconic. Had a much better early buy. Interesting to see. He doesn't go for the boots here, just the double Ruby Crystal, because I believe his secondary runes is resolved. So could have gone boots, could have gone for more mm -hmm. boost speed. Picks the raw health instead. Uh, Iconic asks to level three. I mean, unless you get all six camps, you're not getting four. So, uh, you know, now with this one going down with his Raptors dying, he's almost the rest of the way there, but not quite. Uh, but he can leech like any bit of a lane XP that's four. Doesn't really need four in Sinjao. You have all your skills anyway, but, mm -hmm. you know, worth noting. Uh, Ryama is still continuing his trades up with Jojo Pyun. And now a fight in the bottom side. Tower is on Chime, but he's got the W on, and it's first blood in the bottom lane. Inspired. Oh. Golden Guardians, huge in the early game.
Man, I'm surprised Inspired didn't go in at all for that. Didn't feel like he could clean it up, I guess. With him and Danny, I feel like maybe could have got aggressive there. He popped the Ghost, started moving in. If you get the instant kill on Chime, maybe you can turn things around. But of course, was worried, I think, about just getting stunned up by Chime and going down. And Vulcan trying to hold that lane in a spot where it would threaten a freeze and make them stick around longer. I think So Inspired could come down and get that kill, but mm -hmm. kind of oversold it and got a little bit too far forward, ends up going down. Well, and we can check in the rest of the map, by the way, which is the fact that Tony Top is up CS and a little bit of pressure of impact right now. And if the first five levels on Vladimir are doing well, the next 10 get a lot better. So a pretty good start here. Watch this fight again. So yeah. just and to me, it's, it's a lot just about this, right? It's about the fact that Inspired's coming around. He thought that he was holding them there for this wraparound gang. He just got too far forward. He underestimated yep. their damage. Thought, hey, I have I have the Relic Shield. I have Aftershock. I'm going to be able to just bait this out. But Iconic is there, so Inspired can't even clean it up and ends up just playing it too aggressive and giving over an easy kill. So a mistake there from Vulcan to be sure. A little bit of damage. Souls always feels good. You know, W auto gets you there. Um, and, you know, he's going to stack up. Again, you, you do get far fewer souls while playing as Farm Senna. Uh, there's just a lot fewer souls on minions that you last hit or get killed by an allied relic shield. Those count the same way. Uh, and you don't have as much time to just really harass the Jinx mm -hmm. or the, the uh, Leona because you're busy CSing. Uh, but of course, you have more gold income. So you have your AD from your items instead, uh, just less attack range and, and you know, fewer yeah. free souls. And it does look like he's probably just going straight Kraken Slayer here. He yeah. has the, the pieces of that Noon Quiver. Yep. Um, just working towards that. No tier, no lethality. Uh, as you know, th That build is very powerful, and I think it could have been an option this game because it's not a team with a super tank that you have to kill, but mm -hmm. maybe just feeling like, hey, I'm just going to be hitting the Zen. I'm going to be hitting the Leona mostly. Yep. Uh, I'm wanting to try to maximize DPS for that. Yep. I will say, though, I am partial to support Senna and actually a very supportive build doing items like Locket and, and Redemption. Uh, it actually allows you to still have decent damage. Obviously, it's no Kraken Slayer DPS, mm -hmm. but your damage is still fine, and you're a full support. Yeah. I will say in this comp, their consistent damage is really low. Yeah. So I definitely don't think it fits in this comp. But you know, you're talking about obviously supporting a normal marksman with that. And I do think it can be viable that way. Or a or whatever, yeah. Yep. Inspired going to be grabbing another red buff here. So Iconic not having any access to that yet. And Scuttle spawns top. So he's going to take that again. And it'll be interesting to see when they try to make a move towards this first dragon. You know, I do think that EG wants to start pushing the pace of this game. We talked about their early game power. Yeah. Uh, Jojo is post six now, so you want to be getting a reset, starting to look for plays out on the map, starting to really kind of build up those win conditions around Soul, around Herald, you know, to extend your lead. And the situation right now is Inspired's up, you know? You mm -hmm. can't you can't really debate that one. Obviously, the level one was really, really smart. There's not a lot of Iconic gets to do. He's a slower clearing jungle in the first place. And yeah, we've got a solid five camp lead for Inspired. That's a big deal. That matters a ton. Any fight involving the junglers is going to go EG's way, assuming everything else is equal. However, there's a first blood on Leona. Not optimal, to be fair, but it's yeah. still 200 gold on Stix A. So he's ahead of the curve, right? He's up three CS and an assist. And so, I mean, Jinx is off to the races. Yes, Senna scales very well, right? The Souls mechanic is obviously pretty valuable. Yeah. But yeah, if, if Golden Garden is getting this early game, that's great. Absolutely. I mean, I'd be incredibly happy to be even, which they are now. They were slightly ahead. Uh, I do think that Vladimir really does outscale Kennen. Kennen can have those monster fights that all, you always kind of have that X factor, but so can Vladimir, and Vladimir gets to the point where you can just straight up one tap squishies uh, with a dive into the back line. It gets very, very scary. And swapping over to Ignite, you know, if Iconic kind of gets up to our top side, uh, when you do spellbook over to Ignite, your kill pressure is a lot higher in these types of situations. You know, charge up the empowered Q, E, Flash, R. Ignite, Empower Q, like that alone yep. uh, can be enough to get close to just a full to dead on a squishy champion. Now here's the timing, right? Rift Herald has spawned, we've waited until 8.45, but both supports, both junglers inside of the map, Midler's ready to go, and actually Stixay on the way over as well, whereas Danny, true to EG's normal form, actually leaves him in the bottom lane to get farm. Now Senna, not the best wave pusher, won't get a ton of plates, isn't gonna get as much compared to say like a Ziggs or a Trist, who will actually earn you two plates, so, What's the question? What happens to the side of the map? Senna gets a wave, maybe two. Stixay is going to drop everything, but it will mean Rift Herald. So, again, the answer is how much do you get? And Senna is the worst option for this kind of cross-map play. May still be correct, but they are choosing to cross-map and give up Herald. Well, it's going to be at least that full wave uh, being denied. You know, there's eight minions that were there, I believe. So he's going to lose all those minions, but they're just going to go straight top immediately here and send Tony towards bot, I think, to actually collect that. So. 
Twin needs to ignite something. He, I don't know if TP was down anyway, and it might not have mattered. But like, if he had TP, he needs to burn ignite to unlock that yeah. spell. I think he did use it. I think yeah, they okay. traded TPs with impact. That's fair. Um, is my assumption. But either way, you know, he'll be heading down. They are gonna lose at least the one play, but they're looking for the engage here now. Four versus three. Sent ult to help as well. So four and a half, and now the fight begins. There's a ton of burst and shine. Will die, and then with cannon over the top, it's gonna be a kill as well onto Iconic. And now Stixay is left alone. Gold cartered and killed. A beautiful play by EG to collapse topside. I like the thought by Golden Guardians, but the teammates got there. Yeah, really nicely done there. Now this is Tony going for that kill. Flash for flash, ignite, cleansed as well. So nice attempt, obviously with level lead to try to push Danny out, but mid laner got to show up. AD carry got to help a little bit with the ulti, and EG just had a way better play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ryoma, he he couldn't TP onto a minion or anything. TP is not unleashed yet, right? So he right. TP'd defensively to the tower, but that's way behind the play. TF ults in here. You can see they see Victor on the mini map. You know, Victor's chilling farming, so they're they're making the call to go. In comes TF, in comes that Senna ultimate. The TP is actually fairly quick here onto the tower, but you're just so far away from the play. 6A is completely cut off. He's never gonna get out. And this this was just a really good setup here from EG, a good counterpunch after giving up that Herald top. They get so much more because they get the kills top side, yep. they got the plates bot side, they denied farm bot side, and that is gonna feel really, really good. Yep. Only thing kind of working here for Golden Guardians is at the very least you force both summoners off of Danny, mm -hmm. and Tony just swapped over to Ghost, so he is gonna be able to have the ability to try to uh, look for another play, potentially. And his teleport is back up, so he can show up to a tower in the next few minutes, and now a stun combo comes across to the bottom side. Good damage, you're gonna have a chase through a Sinjao as well. Kenan puts on a stun, but a flashless Kenan does not get to live. Shutdown comes across for the jungler. He's in chunk out of Raihomo, who's keeping his farm up pretty well, and tries to push Jujip out of the lane, but again, those TF ults have been good. The one mm -hmm. for the two kills. Yep, it's the Victor Classic. Just ult the wave, push it out. Try to get pressure through that, but the kill on bot side means a couple plates here for Golden Guardians, and the ult's not going to amount to too much. Inspired's not going to want to go for this straight up into the three-man squad. There would be a lot of damage without anyone really to back him up. Uh, Vulcan would not be enough there, and Danny playing with a, a fire a little bit. You do have to you have to show respect. Anytime they have the empowered Q and ghost up, it's a bit iffy. Looks like Stixie, they're just going to give over his kill. Yeah, going to stop the go. base. Yeah, even the chompers wouldn't matter. Of course, Olaf could always hold through it. So he's like, yeah, I guess I'll kite downwards instead. Get away from the team. Overstayed, though. I mean, you know yeah. they're both in the area, and that is a, a foolish death. They even have a ward in try. So I'm kind of kind of confused as to you know how, how this happened. You have a ward here. You have a ward Woo! here. One hit. Now impacts in. Gets the stun cage down. Just lives. Yeah. So careless death yep. from, uh, from 60 on that bot side. It's going to mean he gives up his life. Dragon will go over here to EG. So EG finally getting a neutral objective and starting to really take over on the map. You can see a good 30 CS advantage here for Inspired. He has the kill, he has the assist as well. Gonna be feeling pretty good about that. Ryoma putting pressure down on Jojo, uh, but Jojo has his ultimate once again. So it's time to look for plays on the map here. And we'll see if he can get active and really try to find something. But this has gotta be a frustrating game for Iconic who has just had his buffs taken away constantly here by Inspired. Yeah, <laughs> Vlad top, sorry buddy. No lane pressure, Sinjo Olaf, not a 1v1 you in either. Uh, obviously, you can just like Olaf ult Q3, and you're like, yeah, my stats are higher than yours. Like, it's not going to work. So, at least we get the Herald summon, though. And at a pretty good time, uh, we're going to knock down two plates with just the auto attacks. Uh, I think he's staying just about in range to share plates. No, I think that all went to Sinjo, actually. I think Stixie mm -hmm. walked far enough away to not yeah. get any of that share. Uh, probably would have been useful. Flash forced out of Ryoma as TF and Olaf show up in the mid lane. Nice attempt right there, but it's a five minute cooldown burn. Five minute cooldown burned. They do at least get the ulti off of both of them. You know, Inspired popped his and JoJo, so uh, not going to be as much playmaking available for them right now. No big objectives on the map just yet. Uh, but 6 does have to be a little bit careful. You know, you always have to pay respect yeah. knowing that the Olaf is in the area. And I think that's why we see Chime is kind of moving down on the mini map here. You know, getting the vision, yeah. just trying to cover this sort of area on the map. Uh, so that Olaf would have to walk through him. And given that Olaf doesn't have ulti, you can probably just stun him and walk away. Yep. It's one of the biggest things to learn playing solo queue. Um, anytime you start to get in these swapping scenarios where... Oh, look for Vulcan. Fight. Hold on. Yeah, Vulcan. Stun. Oh, he gets the body slam in time. The rest of the combo might come in. Beautifully timed cast. Gets Iconic back out, but able to still slink away. Flash, of course, burned. Ulti burned, but a survival for Vulcan. Yeah, really good reaction time by him. Very quick on the body slam to actually be able to get out. And a great disengage ulti as well. 
Uh, this is kind of a bit of an awkward situation, though, where Danny's just 1v1 landing against Tony Top. You can't really push up too much. You will lose that 1v1 if, if Tony can really connect with you. And Inspired is just really trying to maximize farm. So even though they are ahead and they are stronger right now, they have to kind of give things up on the top side because Inspired is power farming down on bot. Yep. He has now turned that into a 40 CS lead. They do lose their flash of support, but Inspired is getting ahead. So he has got to really pay that forward now and be effective in these coming fights. There's a small window for about 15 seconds where Tony just got his ulti back and his flash is a shorter cooldown because of rune choices mm -hmm. that he had a flash advantage over Danny and Danny's flash is up in like five seconds. So like right now, you could almost go for the all in and Danny has like, Ult for self peel, and, and there's like the tiniest, tiniest one, like He's right looking. now. Oh. And Danny plays far back enough that that brush being warded helps a little bit. I mean, yeah. I saw him go in, but now the flash is back. Now Danny can trade sums for sums and live, but there was a very small window, and it's passing. And I will say, you know, as, as long as you're playing with respect to the empowered Q, Tony should not be able to kill you unless he gets the empowered Q, right? So anytime he does have that charge up, you back up. Yep. Because really the way to get the kill is you charge up the E, you flash mm -hmm. in, you release the E, you R to amp your empowered Q. You, yeah. do, you do that full combo and that's how you do it. And he's trying to look for this, but Danny's playing with respect. Yep. Every time he starts channeling the E, he backs up. Every time he has the empowered Q, he backs up. Yeah. And as long as you do that, Tony's probably not going to be able to find a window to actually get that 100 to zero play. Yeah, the interesting thing is though, like there are a couple times where it's like, you have empowered Q, you can flash Rocket Belt. Yeah. You're definitely in range, because Senna can't flash yet, For sure. right? Like there was, there was those 10 seconds where it's like, flash Rocket Belt will put you in Q range. They didn't really have pool E, which is like a little bit more mediocre, but uh, maybe it wasn't quite lethal. Either way, we're gonna move on to the play that we've got going on, which is top turret will actually fall first. EG's top turret was at like 20 health, two. but couldn't be finished. And yeah, the top crash is a lot of money. Top lane and bot lane tier two are the most gold valuable turrets in the game. It's upwards of about 800. It's really, really valuable. And this is gonna be a lot of damage. The question is, can they get the rest of it? Looks like no, as we're looking through the wave, but that is a sitting pot of gold waiting to be claimed. I mean, just look at the farm on Olaf. This is so atypical Ooh. in a competitive game to have more than both of the marksmen, right? Yeah. And this just kind of speaks to Inspired's play style. You know, this is what he did in the LEC. This is how he kind of won his MVP. He played more of the selfish jungle style. He is not the guy to sit around hovering your lanes, help you cover all the time. You know, he goes for maximum efficiency in his pathing. And if there is a camp up, he's gonna do the camp. If the gank is optimal while he's walking by, he's gonna do the gank. Otherwise, he's gonna continue farming. He's gonna attack the enemy jungler, really get in their face and try to take gold from them. And yep. that's how he creates these huge advantages. You know, he's good 600 gold ahead of Iconic, who honestly is farming at a pretty good clip for competitive play. Sure, yeah. I mean, six, seven CS a minute is, is pretty reasonable for, oh, for a jungle in, in you know, high yield of the pro and uh, able to keep that mark going. But obviously we're, we're hitting the first big item way sooner for Inspired here. And as we get uh, to knock down some more minion waves, the gold lead remains 2.5 thousand. Next dragon's up in just three seconds. And I'm curious if Tony Top thinks this is the spike he's in for. Has the cooldown boot, yeah. has the rocket belt. Like, this is a pretty solid spot to be at as Vladimir. I will say I really don't like cooldown boots. I, I just think sword boots are so much better on Vladimir because it's, it's often about, you know, can you get that initial kill, right? And that's why I really do favor, like, the sword boots death cap style of build. I think it's extremely powerful. If you can get into that backline, you can threaten that insta-kill. Uh, you know, if you go really heavy CDR and you go Cosmic and, and CDR boots, you get more rotations of your spells but often it's more difficult to actually stay in range of the carries for that long. So right. it is a bit of a trade-off, right? If you have a long extended fight, I think this is more powerful. If it's a 100 to zero instant fight, the other build is just way better. Sure, and so I want to see if he's going for the one-shots, right? If if they would have happened, you know, and yeah. do the mental math, and like with 10% more damage of killed, ooh, it would have, yeah, unlucky there. So keep that in mind. Gold lead remains about 2.5 thousand, but the dragons are stacking up. We're on pace for a sub 30 minute dragon. So it's going to be infernal, by the way. Uh, my knowledge, based on solo queue stats, it is the uh, least winningest uh, Dragon Soul, though not by much, but just food for thought. Pro play, of course, can be different, but just some thoughts out there. And now, bot lane being pushed in towards the tower. Building top, of course, can always immune stuns, but doesn't easily mean that one. Plays around the gold guard, doesn't do anything, just doesn't hit buttons. Stunned forever, Tony Top, you gotta use your fingers, bud. Gets dropped down, Jojo Pun claims the kill. Yeah, I did not show the respect to that. You gotta pull the gold card, and when he doesn't, he is gonna go down. If he pulled that, it would have been, at the very least, way harder for them to kill you. And unfortunately fails the execution on that one. I always feel so bad when you miss your pool on Vladimir. It's yeah. really, really painful. It's you know, similar to Sivir and missing Spell Shield and those types of things. It's, mm -hmm. it's completely game changing because you give over the easy kill, you give up another tower. That's more map control over on the side of EG. And uh, we'll see if Tony can get anything done here later on.
Now, well, charges up Q3. Not going to have a target to go for, though. I guess Blast plans forward, but I don't think he's nearly fast enough if he needs no. to. Okay. I mean, if you committed Flash and he wasn't respectful, it could have worked. But, yeah, it's fine. Sweep the brush. Take the recall. No problems here. Golden Guardians finally did take the top lane out of turret. I assume someone got local gold on it. Uh, but still just trying to keep up in the game. However, it's now 4,000 gold, the difference. As bot lane outer died. The kill, of course, valuable as well. And... Yeah, EG just really turned on the screws. Yep, and Inspired looking like he's going Spirit Visage second. I do think it's really effective on uh, the Olaf. And honestly, when you're playing against these double AP styles, like if you go Spirit Visage, basically all you have to do is in the fights, you run at the Jinx, so the Jinx is not dealing optimal damage. And you're saying, all right, the Spirit Visage, the resistance I'm building up with this MR is going to deal with the rest. And I'm going to pressure the Jinx. We're going to dive on the Jinx with Kennen, uh, with TF, with Olaf, and really limit Stixay's damage through our play and not through our itemization. And I think that, that play style is, is really legit and can work quite well. Now we look at the rest of the waves pushing in. Mid still under fire. Danny keeping the clip. Uh, doing quite well. 193 CS now. Has managed to uh, eclipse mm -hmm. his jungler and his mid laner. And he does have 34 souls. So at least that's the first range upgrade. It is pretty slow. You know, generally, as you're saying, when you're going uh, this marksman style, and especially if people aren't going to be willing to trade with you a lot, which yep. uh, most people are not. But closing in at least on that second range upgrade did go wit's end here. Again, a nod towards all the AP damage that yeah. is likely going to be what's hitting him. You know, they're going to be diving in towards trying to take out the marksman on opposing teams. Mm -hmm. And it does change the calculus somewhat in terms of going for a uh, flat pin build for Vladimir, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, if you've got a wit's end, the Merc treads everywhere, and it's Spirit Visage. Flat pins, you know, comparatively worse stat. Look at the play now uh, towards Chime. Slowed once. The stun's going to come down. Olaf ults it. And they got Digipun here now as well. But just CC comes across and just a deletion. Down goes Leona. One for nothing, EG. Yeah, Ryoma shows up, but too little too late here. Does expend the teleport. I don't think EG is going to be so bold to just start the Baron in their face or anything crazy like that. But they do get the pick. Feeling good about it. Now GG trying to push in, trying to get something back. They do force a flash off of Danny, but... Now it's Ooh. EG's time to, to really Impact. threaten. Flash, ult available. Not going to go under the tower. Not sure if he's a stopwatch or not. That could have maybe changed the calculus. Mm -hmm. The TP's in for not a whole lot, but they can keep map control for now. Dragon's up in a minute. That would be soul point. And he does have a stopwatch available, but still would be pretty far ahead of the team if he went for it. Inspired not having his ult, I think, really kind of limits your confidence to go for that sort of a crazy play. But it ends up being the trade of TP's. Golden Guardians getting something back on the back end is is going to feel good. You know, taking the flash off of Danny for this next dragon fight means he's more vulnerable to someone like this Vladimir, uh, and that can be pretty impactful. There we go. Smite gets to take a camp. Iconic got to counter jungle inspired. Congratulations <laughs> for CS in the enemy jungle. And eventually you will be the better champion. But again, if the gold lead remains as it is, it's not like inspired is suddenly you know, lower level, fewer items, less stats than the Sin Zhao. So uh, for now, it's still a rough road. 5K, the gold lead grows and grows and grows. Decent damage towards Chime. And the Dragon's up in eight seconds. Is this the time that Golden Guardians fight? No one's playing for the top wave. No one's playing the cross map, which means instead of gaining farm, they're going to fight for the Dragon. But the problem is they're fighting for Dragon on a 5,000 gold deficit and an instant death onto Iconic. Someone's got to, you got to believe someone hits him. Flash of safety. He's actually going to live unless we get the center ulti. No, oh. Iconic! It just if he ran in the same direction, he would have gotten out, but the mind games worked out. Danny claims the kill. Golden Guardians set up for the dragon, lose it, and are still dropping farm in top lane. Just didn't have any vision in that river, and they tried to face check through here. Got to do it a little bit more methodically. You have to feel like maybe check some of those brushes with the victor lasers, do it a little bit more slowly, ward over the wall. Tony now getting caught here. Again, the stuns just keep layering in. He never cast the pool. This time around, though, it was Kenan getting a pretty instant stun. Not a lot of time to react to it, but it's Dragon 3. It's two more uh, kills claimed. And finally, Victor claims 8 CS in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Objective bounties are going to be spawning here for Golden Guardian, so that's kind of your hope now. But at this point, it is getting so out of control. You're at soul point here pretty early. You're more than 6,000 gold ahead. Inspired is going to have even more gold in his pockets, and uh, it's getting very, very grim for Golden Guardians. Damage of Vulcan, but able to jump to the wall. Good spacing on the body slam. And we're getting farther and farther away. Six and a half thousand. The numbers keep growing here as people genius is. are going to get the side lane push as well. Bot lane tier two is killed. Grows it to 7,000 now as a nice blast plant might mean more. Is there a play? Unwilling to chase it, of course. Chime without a hex flash available at the time. Obviously, his real flash is down. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do for the chase. And sadly, Golden Guardians haven't gotten a kill in forever. 
Yeah, it's not able to really find anything. They will take the scuttle around Baron, so give themselves a little bit of safety there, but we saw Kennen push down bot, takes the tier two. He can now reset, move out on the map, but EG can reset, get their wards, move out, try to clear out all this vision that has been established you know, in this area by Golden Guardians and look to start to threaten attempts on that Baron. Look to try to find picks as Golden Guardians try to establish vision because really any even number fight is going to look really, really good for EG now. So they just need to try to draw Golden Guardians into that area and really start to flex that muscle. All right, let's see what's up next for us. Midwave clear, going reasonably well. Danny just going to keep clearing waves. Has gone Hurricane, very much an on-hit build here on the Senna. Uh, some positive synergy with the Hurricane. We'll talk about it in a minute, though. As Inspired is chasing down on a Chime. Stun's not going to do anything. East 4 doesn't matter. Ever Frosted and dead. Inspired finds the next kill. And now Tony Top finally gets his way to pool underneath the gold card. Ulti came in and did about nothing in that fight, but healing back to about 70%. And it's once again, Golden Guardians forced to seed their side of the map and just let Evil Genius's gold lead bloom. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, Chime is trying to push in there to get some vision for Tony so he can maybe get something happening in the side lane. You know, a solo kill in the side lane is one of those things that can buy you a little bit of time, buy you a little bit of hope in this game, but they are just getting punished again and again. They find a slow, a good zone, yes, and then the cross map comes in from Senna. One kill picked up, but a time for Iconic, but cannot get back onto his target. Gonna try as hard as the body slam builds some, some space. And down he goes yet again, a two for nothing, over and over and over again. EG's kills come in twos. It's a stomp, EG running away with it. Inspired JoJo back to that bottom lane. As soon as someone's pushing out, they're just getting punished time and time again. And now, invading on this top side, at the very least, they'll pick up a couple souls here. And now that tier two mid could be under fire. So it's a reset right now, though. TF, Olaf, both back into the base. Mid lane cleared and walking away. So they're going to take their time here and make sure the wards stay up on Baron. And then, you know, honestly, yeah, Dragon Souls in two minutes. You can play that yeah. one pretty reliably. And that's probably going to be a closeout. Yeah, and I mean, you look, you look at the vision that, that's in this area. There's no wards from Golden Guardians on this whole side of the map. Yep. They have one side lane ward, or I guess two right here. Uh, but that's all they have going for themselves right now. And it is just yeah. so hard to face check into this where Kennen could be in a brush, Gragas could be in a brush, Inspired is waiting there, and clearly has the damage just mm -hmm. knocked down whoever face checks him. And Impact is now on a second item, and he hasn't had to use his stopwatch in 27 minutes, so he still has that. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that's tough when you're, when you're so far behind, you can't force out these resources. You can't tax these resources. So uh, Kennen's going to have effectively his own use for one fight while still going a higher damage build. It's smart. Love to see it. Impact's been under very little threat, and it's been a good look as we keep playing the waves out. Vulcan gets to look at some of the farm. Says, will I have a cannon? No. Okay. And Souls keep stacking up. About 40. Uh, 55, yeah. So two range upgrades. Not at the 60 just yet. Just uh, items in inventory is going towards Rage Blade. And now Tony Top does not expect to be flashed after the body slam. Just walks away with Rocket Belt. But more camps get stolen as Inspired is in there. So a quick look at the on-hit Senna build. Uh, she does have very, very poor attack speed scaling. Her base attack speed ratio is incredibly, incredibly low, which, which in some cases makes attack speed items uh, quite poor. That said, uh, she basically does bonus on-hit damage. Uh, she does, I think, 10% of her total AD as just free on-hit damage up front. Uh, that's going to synergize with Hurricane. Of course, she bought it with Sen. That synergizes with Hurricane. Uh, so you have a little bit that kind of pushes back the other way where you mm -hmm. get some extra free on-hit damage that, you know, someone like Tristana doesn't get, for example. Yep, absolutely. I'm going to be feeling pretty good about that. And obviously, the soul proc, really, really nice. Uh, can start to really poke through that damage. Vulcan, getting a little bit aggressive, but playing near the wall, so he's just going to be able to retreat back. And now, have they overstayed? A great ult in. Yeah, pretty good. Ulti gives him some time. Has to flash Look away from impact. Inspired, though. Impact on the flank. There's the flash. Ulti kill on the one. Kill on two, two. You have to believe. Getting low, though, and actually burned down. Victor claims the kill, but it's a 4v3 with a gold lead. Chasing down to Ryoma. Gets a shield. Not going to matter. Three kills picked up. Flash red card. You have to believe it. And it means Dixay is able to keep walking away to live. Had cleanse regardless, so it wasn't going to matter. And now Inspired finds another Q. Wasn't going to kill, but 6A flashes it anyway. 4v2 on the map. Health bar is low. Leona goes in. Stopwatch for a second to buy some time. And now Chime out of the turret. It's going to be enough, though. The rocks can come out. 6A is trying to get the kills. Inspired is low. Is it going to be enough? He sidesteps another axe. If Chime can get in, that could have been a couple of kills. Not quite the damage. If 6A had maybe a 1,000 more gold that turns around for a bit, but sadly, EG too far ahead. Yeah, just the slimmest margin there. Just didn't quite have the damage. If he could have got the kill there, get the reset, get a triple, maybe there's some sort of hope. But instead, they all get out. Danny's going to claim soul here on the other side of the map as well. 
really, really rough. And yeah, the flash red card there, but the slow is applied. He had to cleanse it anyway. And here's the initial play once more, trying to punish Vulcan, but he's playing it close. And as you walk forward, you're just walking straight into the arms of this cast. Gold card into cast, knocking him straight in. Impact in the back line, threatening. Yes, he can't get to Stixa. He's playing it in his smart location, but he gets straight in onto those two members. Wants to hold on the stopwatch, gets it a bit greedy there, so does end up going down, but Inspired is just rampaging through this team. Ryoma falls. There is that flash red card that has to be cleansed on the slower. He's just going to go down, and now EG back to live, clearing out vision around this area. That is going to be the game plan, really, from now and until forever. Just clear wards out of this section of the map over and over and over. Force Golden Guardians to come into this area and fight you around it. Ooh. Good knockback and a TF at the top. Yeah, nowhere to go. Goodbye to Ryoma. Maybe a retrade, though. Yes, they get the TF, so a one for one, but the other side looks bad. Vladimir and Sinjab buying a bit of time. However, EG is too tanky. Inspired of the front lines does not care about this damage. Blast plant not going to happen in time. And it's just going to be a complete shutdown there. So another kill on the board, plus one yet again for EG. He's just so aggressive at defending this vision. As soon as they see Ryoma, he's trying to clear out some of these brushes with lasers, trying to utilize him and Chime to get some some eyes in the area, but he shows up. They know his flash is down from the previous fight. Instant ulti out there from JoJo. They get that kill. They get the Baron. It's going to be a good 12,000 plus gold lead now. So much of an advantage here for EG. Another range upgrade has come through as well for Danny. He's past 60. So the sieging becomes very, very simple for EG as well. Now we'll see what they send themselves. At the very least, Golden Guardians have survived longer than the average LCS team here against mm -hmm. Evil Geniuses. That doesn't reflect on the scoreboard at the end, though. It's still going to be a 0-1 start, barring some kind of major miracle. You know, 98-2 at this point, something like that. This is you know, very, very EG favored, and that, you know, outscaling they're going to kick in when you keep your gold lead above 10,000. Look at the Ooh, play. They nice find nice a slow on a JoJo Pyun. Still the first stun comes across. Chopper's coming down, not quite for the first route, but he's at one hit. Is there going to be more going on? Not just yet, Rocket. Not going to find its target. Looks like it's a sidestep there for Jojo Pion. So no kills. And now Tony top too far up in the oh. river to shut down. Then it's time to run away. Sure, TF might be gone, but can you win this one? Decent damage out of Victor Chime. So trying to front line. Right now, Sticks are trying to lifesteal back up, but the rest of his team is already dead. Danny has shown up the team fight. Quadra kill. Penta kill. Danny shows up to clean it at the end. Danny going off. Another competitive Penta kill for this guy. What a player. EG looking strong here in game number one against Golden Guardians. And yeah. what a way to finish it. Vulcan instant body slam on that E flash from Tony Top. Danny goes off, cleans him up, and EG are looking good. All right, well done. 32 30. Nexus falls, evil geniuses. Had a level one winning top lane, used it to completely destroy Iconic's jungle path and kept it behind the entire game. We had a couple of decent looks from Golden Guardians, a kill on the bot lane, a couple of plays, but though they had ideas, EG executed theirs far better. The brains were larger, and they just, they lived evil. Golden Guardians died evil. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, Tony Top not having the best game here. You know, really, I don't think got much out of the Vladimir. Yeah. Uh, it felt like he, he kind of failed the interactions when he needed to really hit it. You know, had a few opportunities to maybe get something done, but kept just dying, getting CC chained down. And if you're a split second late on that initial pool, you never get to move because the subsequent CCs just come in and continue to come. Yeah. And he, he just ends up going down. And I've got to say, Faker only has one competitive pentakill. Danny tied with Faker now at yeah. the very least. I don't, I don't know if he actually got one last year because he had that delayed penta. That's oh, his right. play. Mm -hmm. but I don't think that was it. So there you go. That's true. I mean, honestly, just tied on the scoreboard. Better just players. Baker. Better players are in the LPS, yeah. honestly. Uh, I mean, shout out to pretty much everyone on that roster. I mean, Impact, I think, just kind of sat there on side lane and was like, he was part of level one invade, but like kind of yeah. chilled the whole time. Um, but the, the cross-ups were really good, right? The I, I like the Golden Guardians idea of, okay, we're going to bring bot lane up, play for Herald, and then stay there and go for turret. Like, I thought it was a cool play. It was a smart play. Mm -hmm. It was going to give a lot of gold and a jinx and celebrate the game. Problem is, they weren't really tracking TF, and they weren't tracking that, like, well, Blast Plant over. Senna ult, TF ult, it's a 4.5v3. And I'm sorry, like, Victor can't join in time. You yeah. already sent Tony Top down a bottom lane. It's not even in his name, but they did it. And oops, 
we went for a plan play, but there was actually a counter on the map already. And then EG's like, well, the game has been over from now on. Yeah. And they just took control the entire time. I mean, so. Inspired was just so far ahead from oh, that yeah. point. Really good game from him. But EG do take a decisive win to claim the lead in this series. And we're going to break it all down at the State Farm.